everyone. I know it's only been a week since I last saw you all, but even a week seems like far too long. So I'm so excited to be back with you all blooming today. And I see Jackie's commenting. Welcome, Jackie. I'm very excited to have you here. Debbie as well. You all, if you are new to this platform, uh, again, this is Bloom. We are a women's empowerment network, and we are here to bridge the gap in, in terms of information. So we have uh, many interactive discussions about health, wealth, beauty, confidence, and self-love. And this is a very vulnerable, safe platform specifically for you. So you get from it what you bring to it. So I just want to encourage everyone as we like, you know, start with today's discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Hi, April. Hi, Monica. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you all here. Welcome. You know, a lot of people have been asking for us to do another credit discussion, and obviously I am 100% always for a credit discussion. You guys know who have been with us before that I am very vulnerable about my poor credit decisions that I've made in the past and the things that I have done to transform my credit. Um, but before we get started, though, I want to talk about a different topic. So. You know, as women, the whole premise of this show is to talk about wellness and us being whole and things like that. And so as I've been watching the television and the news and even in our own personal experiences in life, I know that sometimes, you know, we'll get to a certain position in life and we can achieve a great deal of success, but we still aren't making ourselves a priority. And so I want to play a short clip and get you all's opinion on something that's been very relevant in the forefront of the news recently and just see you know what your thoughts are So obviously, I don't know if you all were able to hear that clip that we just played just a second ago. I apologize in advance if you were. But obviously, Simone Biles is a uh, widely recognized athlete. And so when we talk about wellness, and that's one of the main importance of us having these type of discussions, you know, wherever we are in our life, we have to make ourselves a priority, in my opinion. So I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on uh, the backlash that Simone Biles has received and what are your thoughts about her taking a break from the Olympics as well? I'm just so curious to hear what your thoughts were on that whole uh, process and her decision to withdraw initially from the Olympics. I know many of you all know that she decided to compete recently uh, in the balance beam. Um, and also a lot of us are aware that that is one of the hardest events in the realm of gymnastics. So let me know your thoughts in the chat and I wanna just briefly talk about that before we get ready uh, to do this credit discussion. Do you agree with her decision to withdraw initially? So I'll get started with my opinion. So honestly, when I heard that she was withdrawn from the Olympics, I had no idea uh, what the decision, why the decision was made. Debbie says yes, 100%. Um, so I had absolutely no idea why the decision was being made. Um, but once I heard that it was a mental health reason, I thought this was the perfect story to bring to this platform so we can discuss it. The more successful that we get, especially as women, the more pressure that's on us. And I think her story and the fact that she did that on such a large scale just really reminds us of the importance of putting ourselves first. Um, and not worrying about what other people have to say. So you have to be your biggest advocate. We definitely, you know, even myself and other people here at Bloom, we want to make sure that we are always encouraging you to take, put yourself first. Um, but you just, you just have to do it. I agree. Jacqueline said, I'm proud of her for recognizing 
uh, that she, I believe you're saying that she has uh, s some struggles. I agree. Thank you for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Robin said, I think she did the right thing for her well-being as well. Yes, you have to put yourself first. So I think it's powerful, like I said, that she actually, you know, as widely known, as famous as she is, she's obviously heavily decorated. For her to make that decision to put her mental health first, I, I was 100% in support of her. So thank you all for just engaging in conversation with us about that. Um, and I wanna go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with our credit discussion. Before we get started, um, I want to mention a few things. This topic right here is extremely important to us. Hi, Kim. Welcome. So this topic is extremely important to me and to all of us here. And I understand exactly why you all want to uh, have this discussion. Um, financial power, financial literacy is very important. And it, I honestly believe that it's something that should be taught in schools. Unfortunately, in most schools, it is not. Uh, I have had a lot of financial struggles in the past. When I first graduated from high school, I would max out my credit cards. I have uh, gone outside my house and my car wasn't there anymore. And I'm thinking it's stolen, but it was actually repossessed. <laughs> so obviously, I, you know, I'm, I put all that out to be vulnerable because I want people to know no matter where you are in life, you can totally transform your credit score. It has taken a lot of work, a lot of research, but I am so excited to be where I am now and I am proudly holding an 813 credit score and I am very guarded over my credit score and very protective over my information to make sure that it stays that way. So if you have any questions as we get started, feel free to comment in the chat box. Uh, this stuff is very, very important. It will save you money over time. So let's go into the next slide. I want to ask you all, when were women actually able to get their own credit card? What year? Does anybody know? When were women actually allowed to have credit? Comment in the chat if, you're, if you know the answer to that. So let's start while you're commenting in the chat. Let's start with the basics. So a credit score is basically a three digit number designed to represent the likelihood that you will pay your bills on time. Yes, 1974, you nailed it. <laughs> you got it. So when you think about it, it's actually not that long ago, right? Didn't know that was a thing, yes. Yes, there definitely was a restriction in the past, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, women had to be married, purchase homes and, and things like that under their husband's name. So, you know, that's why it's very important. <laughs> you cheated, you use Alexa, that's okay. That's why it's very important for us to have these kind of conversations and share information with each other. And then also have these kind of conversations at the house with our children as well, because they don't have to actually start where we start, where we, where we finish. We can you know, make sure that they're engaged in the conversation and understand financial literacy at a very much earlier age, I should say, than we did. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this slide right here is big. So what makes up your credit score? So the biggest percentage of impact on your credit score is always gonna be your payment history. Are you paying your bills on time? I tell people all the time, when you are signing a, a promise note basically with a bank or you're, you're using your credit card, that is your name that's on there. So make sure that your name means something. When you sign your name, make sure that you, you have confidence in yourself that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do and that you're gonna pay your bills on time. And if for some unforeseen reason you cannot pay your bills, call the lender. You can a lot of times work out some type of an agreement with them where you can make your payment 30 days late. They will work with you. But if you just, you know, don't contact them or explain your current circumstances, a lot of times they will go ahead and report it to collections and it's going to show up as a negative report on your credit card. So the next percentage is the amount that you owe. OK, so what does that mean? If you have a credit card and your limit is $500, how much, what percentage should you be charging to that car at the most? 
I'll let you all answer that. Your credit limit is $500. How much should you be charging on your credit card at the most? What do you think? So the answer to that, if you don't know, is 30, no more than 30% utilization. So what does utilization mean? Is how much of your, yes, absolutely. 30%, Debbie, you got it right. Robin, you were close. So you shouldn't be using no more than 30% of your credit card balance. So that equals, if your credit limit is $500, you should not be charging no more than $150 on your credit card. But if you want to get to the 800 range, the name of the game, yes, absolutely. The name of the game is 6% utilization. So that number would be far less if you're staying below 6% utilization. You don't want to use your credit cards as in a case of emergency. You wanna make sure that you have a savings account established of at least $1,500, at least $1,500. So if your tires go out, you're planning and you're being responsible and you're planning for unforeseen accidents. And so if something happens, you need to replace your tires, you have some plumbing issues at the house, you can use the cash that you have on hand versus your credit cards. Okay, so the more that you use in your credit cards shows your lenders that you cannot afford the credit card, that you actually need the money that they are lending you. So yes, so if you stick to $500, if your credit limit is $500 and you stick to 6% utilization, you should not be charging no more than $30 on that credit card. And so the next category is 15, is uh, age of credit. And so that one is 15%, okay? You wanna make sure that you're not opening up a new card every year per se. For me, I normally would say, Again, this is my own personal experience. You know, if you have an accountant or a financial planner, definitely seek their, their, their advice. But I'm just telling you exactly what I have done to increase my credit score. And hopefully maybe it will help other people. But I stick to no more than five credit cards. I do not need to have five credit cards. More than five, excuse me. I do not need to have more than five credit cards. And majority of the cards that I have, I've had for at least seven years, all the way up to 15 years. And they are all in good standing. And so that's what you want. You want to show your lenders that you have cards that you're loyal to. I do not do store credit. I do not do store credit cards. I only stick with the MasterCard, the Visa, American Express. Uh, some people recommend um, Discover as well, but I've never used uh, Discover. And then you want to also show uh, that you have new credit and then a credit mix. I think those two are very self-explanatory. So you, the name of the game, you don't have to have a ton of debt, um, but credit mix basically means that you have a mortgage, that you have, um, even if you have a personal loan instead of a mortgage, that you have credit cards, but all of your accounts are in good standing. And unfortunately, I know a lot of people do not like having some type of debt, um, but the credit system was created uh, to, sh to demonstrate in order to help people demonstrate how they are able to manage debt. Of course, you can buy things with cash. You know, definitely do it if you can. Cash is great. Discover, like Kim says, Discover has great cash back rewards. That's a huge benefit. Always try to see uh, their cash, you know, see if their your credit card has cash back rewards. Check on uh, LendingTree.com. I don't know if you all have heard of that website. That is a great website to go on to actually look at the reviews of credit cards before you actually apply. It will give you detailed information on the average credit score that people have had prior to applying for that card. It will tell you, um, you know, reviews, how people rate those cards, cash backs. And you also want to see if there's an annual fee associated with that card. So there's plenty of cards without an annual fee, but there are still cards that have a $200 annual fee, $250, $500 annual fee. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to those things uh, prior to applying for a credit card. So let's go into the next slide. Yes, you do not. Yep, my mother-in-law said, I don't use credit cards to charge an annual fee. I totally agree. 
So now let's talk about some powerful tips to help boost your credit score. Let's go on to the next one. So the number one step, unfortunately, when and I've been there before, a lot of times when people do not have a, a great credit score or they're nervous about some of the financial decisions that they've made in the past, they make the big mistake of not even looking at their uh, credit report. That is a huge mistake. No matter where you are, you can transform your life. You can transform your credit score. You just have to take the first step and actually look at your credit score to see where you are currently. If you ignore the issue, the issue will continue to grow and you'll be in the same position. I know there's a lot of people who message and said that they want to fix their credit because they want to purchase a home or do something like that. All of these things can be worked through. Again, a 582 credit score is very, very low. That is where I started, um, but you can move your way up. Unfortunately, discrepancies um, or negative reports on your credit card on your credit score, excuse me, stay on there for seven years. But the more you show your account in good standing, the better that it will look and the better things will look to lenders and they will consider you credit worthy. They will extend to you credit again. So the first step is attain a copy of your credit report. Yes, Jacqueline says she uses Credit Karma. That is another fantastic avenue. Yes. And so if you go on to annualcreditreport.com, you can get a free credit report, free, so you have no excuse. We have no excuse not to get a copy of our credit report. And now since the pandemic, they are offering a free copy of your credit report once every quarter. Um, originally, there was only annually. Um, but they understand that people have a financial hardship at this time. And so you can go on there once a quarter and actually view your credit report. Unfortunately, you will not get a, uh, a credit score, but at least you'll be able to go through and see who you have debt with, the, the status of your account. You'll have the numbers where you can actually call someone and speak with them and just figure out what you can do to get your account in good standing. Starting there is huge. I just really want to encourage people again to go on annualcreditreport.com. It is absolutely free. And if you take the steps to fixing your credit score, then you can be in a much better place even a year from now. So um, you just got to do the work and we're here to support you. Again, I've messed up. I've done it all. But there is light at the end of the tunnel if you do the work. So let's go into the next step. So the next step is basically credit management, the things that boost your credit score. I've talked about this in the past. When Sean and I first got married, we had over, I think it was about $126,000 worth of debt. Yes. And that is a lot. That is a whole lot of debt. Um, and we had, we sat down with each other and there were some bickering moments because <laughs> it was not a happy situation. We were both stressed out. But when we were we were not paying attention to our finances and uh, the debt just kept piling up and piling up and it, and it ended up hurting our credit score. And sometimes a lot of times overspending poor financial habits um, is just a cover up for a bigger issue. Uh, so I just want to encourage people to just deal with whatever issue that they're they're experiencing and just go detailed line by line. If you have a good partner that you can do this with a good friend. Go line by line through your, your debt. Um, it is totally worth it. We were able to pay off all of our debt. I mean, it was truly a blessing by God within like a little over a year, a year and a half. But it took some sacrifices though. It took a lot of sacrifices. We downsized, uh, we cut back on our expenses. Uh, we did all those type of things. So, um, so basically, yeah, so here's some of the things that boost your credit score. So if you have open accounts, make sure they're in good standing, pay your balances before they're due, you know, set up automatic payments. So it comes directly out of your account. If you have a checking and a savings accounts, which is, which is highly recommended, set up overdraft protection. And if you don't, does anybody know what overdraft protection is? It's very easy to set up. And so basically what it is, is if you're having, if you have an expense coming from your checking account 
and you don't have the, the, the amount of money for that transaction to go through, they will pull money from your savings account to cover that expense versus the transaction declining and you have to pay a fee to your lender, which is $35 generally, and another $35 fee to the merchant. Okay, so that $10 uh, pair of slippers that you wanna get ends up costing you, uh, what, $80 uh, because you didn't have overdraft protection set up. So set up automatic payments and things like that and, and just, just get it done. Um, diversify your credit accounts. If you have a mortgage payment, a credit card, you don't even have to have a balance on your credit card. You can use your credit card. What we'll do now is we'll charge something small on there, something around $3, I don't know, like a bag of candy. And we'll just let it sit on there for about 21 days and we'll just go and pay it off before uh, the due date of the credit card, just to show that we're using the card. And a lot of times people don't know if you're not using your card and you go more than six months without using your card, most credit card companies will stop reporting to your credit report. And so that card that you're thinking you're doing well with is not, you're not getting credit for the, the excellent management that you're doing with that card because you're not using it. So you have to use your cards regularly, um, again, but it can be a $3 transaction and then you just go in and just diligently pay it off with autumn. Yes, yes, I've been through that. <laughs> yes, I've had a credit card before that I did not use for over six months and I looked at my credit report and it was not showing on there even though the card was active. And so now, at least every two months, I make sure I use that card I charge, like I said, like $3 on it, and then I wait until the, the cycle is almost done, um, and I call them and I pay it off. And so here's another pro tip that I started doing, which may seem a little tedious. But all of my credit cards, what I started doing is I call each and every one of them, and I would, I would find out when they report to the credit bureau. And so Capital One, for example, I have a Capital One credit card. They report to the credit bureau on the 27th, okay? So that would tell me that I need to have some type of balance on that card somewhere around the 26th and then pay it, and then pay it off. Just to make sure that balance will report very extre like extremely low and I don't have a, even a high balance, for example, on that card. Does that make sense for you guys? Position yourself for success. So just make sure that you always know when, you, when your cards are going to report to the credit bureau. So if you cannot pay your entire balance by the day that it's going to re report, like for example, the 27th, pay as much as possible on that card prior to the day that it's going to report to the credit bureau. So when it reports, your balance is as low as possible. Okay? And of course, pay your bills on time. That is the biggest thing. That's 35% of your credit score is paying your bills on time. Reduce all of your debt on your balances. I told you all that we had like $126,000 worth of debt. That was extremely stressful, but we paid it all off. Um, one of the things that a lot of times is recommended is you can sort all of your credit cards uh, by interest rate. And so the card that you have that has the highest interest rate, you can start making uh, additional payments on that card. So you basically, if you have five cards, you, you, you sort them uh, depending on the interest rate. You pay all of your minimum payments on all the cards, but make an additional payment to the balance on the card with the highest interest rate. And so you say, why that card? Because you are losing the most amount of money on the card with the highest interest rate. So you want to pay that one off first. Some people do it the reverse way, where if you like instant gratification, you can sort your card by balance. If you have a card that only has a $500 balance, if you're a person, know yourself. If you're a person that only, um, that likes instant gratification, and, and the, what works for you is to pay that card off first because it has the lowest balance, then just do it. Whatever works for you, just get it done so you can pay off your debt. And then also get rid of negative information on your credit report. So again, if you go to annualcreditreport.com and you notice that there's something on your credit report that does not belong to you, you can easily dispute it. 
Okay, so you just got to go on there and just go with an open mind um, and try to approach it with more of an objective view that is something that you can take care of. So just stick to the facts, stick to the process of cleaning up your credit report. And so you can just, you know, get through this chapter and, uh, you know, get to the place where you have at least a 700 credit score. Yes, exactly. And when that one is paid off, okay, so we, so we talked about you have five credit cards, okay? And so you line them up and when you, when you make an additional payment on that credit card, when you make an additional payment on that credit card and that one is paid off, you take that same payment, you do what's called the snowball method. And you take that same amount that you were paying on that card and you put it on the, the next credit card in line. And then you continue to do that until that one is paid off. And then you take that payment and you put it on the third credit card in line until all of them are paid off. And celebrate your victories. I don't care if you have to, if you like Starbucks and you want to go get you a latte every time you pay off a credit card. Or, you know, if obviously if you're in debt, you want to make sure that, you know, you're still not overspending. You don't have to go buy a $1,600 Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Louis Vuitton does not care about your, your personal finances, from what I can tell. But just make sure that you do things to celebrate little victories. You know, even if it's like it's a bottle of champagne, you know, they, you can get a $15 bottle of champagne. I don't know if you've heard about it. But, um, or even go in a, you know, like get a cup of coffee and go out with your spouse or your significant other or your friend. Just get a cup of coffee and celebrate those milestones. Um, because this is really a big deal. I mean, when you talk about, you know, fixing your credit, you're saving money. You're talking about the difference between uh, a six to nine percent interest rate on a vehicle versus uh, a two percent interest rate on a vehicle, and sometimes less because some vehicles they're not. I haven't really seen them recently, but they would do a zero percent uh, APR for credit cards, and but they would also do. I've seen uh, some car, some companies would do a zero percent interest rate for vehicles for a certain amount of time too. Um, so definitely, you know, this stuff is important. It's saving you money over time. Interest rates right now on mortgages are extremely low. Some people are getting mortgage rates as low as 1.79. Hint, hint, in case you were considering re refinancing your home. Uh, for the veterans that are here, interest rates are as low as about 2.25. Um, if you are considering refinancing your home, look into it. If you cannot do it now, plan for the future. You may have an opportunity to fix your credit and build up your credit score so you can qualify. Your credit score actually goes all the way up to, uh, I know you see 300 to 800 here, but your credit score actually goes up to 850 as well as your FICO score. And so anything over 800 is great. It's like a pat on the back for yourself. But the lenders consider a perfect score 800. So you're not going to get you're not going to get any better of a rate if you have an, an 813 credit score versus an 800 credit score. Um, but you know, I like to be an overachiever because I have uh, been on the you know the opposite end of the spectrum with my credit score for a very long time. So um, if you can get it to the 800 or above, which I know all of you can. Uh, for those who are not there yet, then, you know, let's celebrate together on Bloom. <laughs> so we talked about reduce your balance on your debt, um, get rid of negative information on your credit report. Uh, Kim has a comment. She said she thought she had set up all of her cards on auto pay, um, but forgot one and was late making the payment. Quickly dropped my credit score a few points. I was so mad. I was so sad and mad at myself. Totally get that. Okay, so, and I've done that. Thank you, Kim, for your honesty, because I've done that too. I'm so glad you missed that. You mentioned that point, because that's the next thing that I was going to say, because I've done that as well. When you have a credit card and you have established a healthy relationship with them, so what's a healthy relationship? A healthy relationship means that you always pay your cards on time. You can call them, like Kim just said and say, oh my goodness, I forgot to make my payment and you know, it was a mistake. And so they're gonna, you, you have established a healthy relationship with your lender. So they're gonna do exactly what they did with Kim and they're gonna say, you know, it's okay, we'll waive it you know, this time and we'll put your account in good standing. Okay, so when you think about your credit cards, and I know a lot of times you, you think this is just a number, um, but these, this is a relationship still. This is a relationship with your lender. 
Um, and so, you know, make that a priority and make sure that you you have an honest relationship with them. The same way that you want to have an honest relationship with your family members or your friends, have an honest relationship with your lenders too, your mortgage lenders, your credit card lenders. Um, so, you know, if an unforeseen accident happens, you can, you know, you can recover and you can just give them a call and, you know, they'll trust you and they'll just waive the fee or make sure that it doesn't impact your credit score because they want to maintain that relationship with you. So they'll vouch for you. So I've done that before too, Kim. And so one of the things I started doing now is my credit report, excuse me, my credit card balance, for example, is due on the 29th of August. And so I'll schedule my automatic payment instead for like the 25th, for example, just in case you know, something happens, I can still manually go in there and, um, you know, make a payment. And so make sure in doing that though, but you have to go in and look at your profile, make sure that your email address is updated and is correct. Your telephone number, if you change your telephone number recently, make sure it's updated and correct, you know, make sure all of that information is in the system so they can contact you on the phone or at least email you to let you know that something is wrong. So you can swoop in and make sure that you're protecting your credit. Robin, I'm so happy that you're here and that you're enjoying this information. You guys, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next slide. Okay, and so here's another great one. So if you actually wanna have your credit, your credit, you actually get your credit score, excuse me, Jackie mentioned that I believe she has an account with Karma. A lot of times, if you want your actual credit score number, you have to uh, pay for it. USAA, I believe it's like $4.95 a month where you get access to your credit score. Uh, Experian app is another good one uh, where you can get access to your full credit report. Yes. Okay, so Barbara said, if you change the amount on your auto pay, make sure... Uh, it pays that month. Same, go into the, yeah, make sure it goes into the system the following month. Absolutely. Follow up on it. Absolutely. Great point. And so Experian has a good, um, a good uh, credit score uh, app where you can go on and take a look at your credit score and just know the actual number. This step here is extremely important because you just want to be mindful and just make sure that you're looking at your credit score. If they have any updates, they'll send you a notification immediately. If something's wrong, if something, if somebody charges something to your account or steals your identity, you'll get notified immediately so you can take action and cancel that card. Um, and there are also platforms out there where you, if you don't have established credit currently, you can go in the system and register your rent payment, for example, to build credit history, your utility bills and, and build credit history. Um, you know, all types of stuff, your cell phone bill and build credit history. You just have to just get into the system and just make a conscious effort and you can definitely turn things around. Or even, even if you're at the 700 point, <laughs> you can build it even higher if you just follow some of these tips. Yeah, so that's a great point. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And so this one is huge. We talked about this a little bit, but create a timeline for managing your debt and stick to it. You know, for me, it all balled down to getting out of my own way. Um, it was very, very hard to realize the fact that, you know, I was in so much debt Okay, Jackie, I'll, I'll touch that one too. So Jackie says, which score is more accurate, Experian or TransUnion? All are very accurate, honestly. Um, so it just, it just depends. So there are a lot of times lenders will pull different credit reports. So they'll pull your TransUnion credit report or they'll pull your Experian one or they'll pull your Equifax or sometimes they'll just look at your FICO score. A lot of times FICO score is generally used when you're applying for a mortgage. Um, and so normally they all are within the same range. Sometimes I've seen it even with mine, it may differ about, you know, seven to eight points, but they should still all be in the same range. Uh, and if you can, a lot of times it's only uh, probably about $15 a month. For example, with USAA, if you sign up so you can view all three of them, 
Uh, it's going to be accurate if you're making sure that there's nothing uh, on there that's not supposed to be on there. So just taking a look at your credit report routinely. You can actually, if you're going to apply for a mortgage or a personal loan, you can ask them in advance which, um, which, which are they going to pull from Experian or TransUnion just to verify because it's not the same a lot of times depending on what lender you go to. Uh, so maybe that may be important to you because your TransUnion score uh, takes you over the 800 mark and you want to purchase a vehicle and you want the lowest interest rate possible, for example. Um, so no, generally they're all within the same range uh, that I've seen with mine. Uh, if somebody has a different experience, definitely feel, sure, feel free to uh, comment in the section in the comment chat box. So yes, to create a timeline for managing debt and just stick to it. You can set up automatic payments. You don't have to, you know, once you actually look at the details of your, of your debt and you actually create a system that works for you, you can set up automatic payments um, so you can budget and just make sure that things are working uh, in the system in a manner that you uh, have decided for it to. And you don't have to just, you know, focus on it and stress about it too much. For me, uh, when I realized that I was in so much debt and I actually did the numbers, Actually having a plan um, and realizing that I could get myself out of this, that we can get ourselves out of this within a year was very refreshing. You all know we've been, for example, with the, in this pandemic for well over uh, 15 months. We all know how fast a year can go by, but I want to stress the importance of not ignoring it and uh, just letting it go by and actually not dealing with it. So Robin has a very great question. I'm so glad that you asked this, Robin. She says, at what age should young adults begin to establish credit? This is a good one. So this is another reason, thank you again, Robin, for this question, that I am uh, very excited to have this conversation because a lot of times, especially with the peers and people I've spoken to, they have all had very similar stories to mine where they did not understand how to manage uh, their debt uh, for example, and so in their credit score, just to be quite honest. And so a lot of us have had to learn by trial and error. But one of the major benefits, in my opinion, of getting this in order is being able to establish good credit for our children. And so if you have great credit, some credit card companies will allow you to add your children as an authorized user on your card as low as the age of 13. Now you may say 13, you know, I don't want my 13 year old having a credit card. You know, they may not manage it properly and they can, you know, mess up my credit score. You do not have to give them a card. You can hold it and you can manage it for them. But if they have, if they're listed as an authorized user, user on your credit card, then they're going to show that they have great credit as well because they're getting the benefit of the fact that you have great credit, but you have to make sure that if you do that and you add your children as an authorized user on your credit card, that you are in a position where you're able to manage it properly, okay? Because we don't want to injure our baby's credit score because they have such a fresh start in life. And like we, as we like to say, they have age to their advantage. And so I really want to see us producing children uh, that are extremely financial literate and that we can have conversations. I would love if you have a child that knows about stocks and, and you want them to come on and talk about, talk about stocks with us, please invite them. I would love to see these next generation, you know, flourishing and, and being future millionaires, even at 21, 22. I just love stories like that. So thank you, Robin, for asking that question. Okay, let's go to the next one. And so this, kind of, this slide kind of touches on a lot of the, uh, the things that we were just talking about. So what are some of the benefits of having an 800 plus credit, credit score? You can have any credit card you want. You can have credit cards with no annual fee. But while we're on this topic about no annual fee, let's just mention this. If you've had a credit card for an extended period of time and you have a high interest rate, um, so a lot of times, sometimes credit cards have a variable interest rate. They'll start you out at 17%. If you start to mismanage your credit score, your credit, excuse me, they'll push you up to 24%. So it just fluctuates depending on, you know, how they can benefit off of your um, lack of financial literacy. 
And so if you are now in a position where you have no debt or uh, less than 6% utilization of your credit card, you can call them and renegotiate your rate. So that's more money that you save. And so another benefit, sometimes you get uh, you know, credit card bonuses. You can get credit cards with 0% financing, 0% APR, no foreign exchange fee. Uh, you can get your favorite store card, which I am not a big fan of uh, store cards myself. And I wanna share a quick story with you all. So you know, I, you know, I feel very comfortable, obviously, with where my credit score is. And I actually traveled out of state um, a couple of months ago and I went into a store, um, a very small chain store. I haven't heard of it anywhere else, but they had some cute items. So I wanted to go in there and just take a look. And so the woman at the counter asked me if I wanted to apply for a store card. And I told her, no, thank you. And she looked me in my eye and she said, it's okay. If you get declined, you can still get the 10% discount. And so, you know, I just looked at her and just smiled because when you feel confident in yourself, some people just does, don't deserve um, a response. Um, but a lot of times people make assumptions about us and that's a whole nother topic um, just based upon, you know, just their perception of us, how we look. Uh, and so, you know, I just really just love for us to continue to have conversations like this. And that was a terrible assumption that she made uh, that I was going to get declined for a card just because I refused. But don't feel like you have anything to prove to anyone as you're going through this journey. And so you can get uh, airline hotel cards, you can get the best uh, mortgage rates, your best uh, loan, auto loans with 0% interest rates. Yes, you can get store cards. Well, store cards, yes, average. 20% uh, plus, which is extremely high. You can get low insurance premiums, per best personal loan rates. You can get uh, apartment rentals. And again, like we just said earlier with our discussion with Robin, you can add your children as an authorized user, which is an extremely great benefit. You know, I want to see our children moving out the house and purchasing a home. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. And so as you're moving through this, I want us to remember, if you are partnering with someone to manage your finances, it is a team assignment. Assign the right people for the task. If you have someone in your team, in your family, uh, your husband, your wife that is more detail-oriented, and um, you feel like they would be a better person to develop the spreadsheet and you know just back brief you on the payment schedule and that everything is getting done or if you're and if you're the breadwinner and you're bringing more home you know to the plate find a way to just work together um without hopefully without without uh, arguing thank you tracy i'm so glad you like this slideshow thank you for being here just find a way to work together schedule weekly meetings go to the coffee shop if if this creates a very tense environment, I highly recommend leaving the house, maybe going to a coffee shop somewhere where it's like a neutral environment so you can hopefully feel more relaxed and not bring the tension to the house just to have these kind of conversations. Unfortunately for many of us, um, you know, conversations about finances and financial literacy is not something that we grew up having, not even in school or in the house. So sometimes we approach it with more of a tense demeanor. Uh, but it does not have to be that way. So try to have fun with it and know where you are is not where you're going to end up. It's not about how you start, as my daddy would say. May he rest in heaven. It's not about how, how you start, but it's about how you finish. And so I believe in you guys. I believe in you. Okay, let's go to the next one. And learn to say no to people and things that do not align with your goals. I think that's just the underlying message in all of our conversations here at Bloom. If someone is for you, they will support you. But if you are going and revamping your finances, you do not have to tell people what you are doing. If someone invites you out or to an event and it is not within your budget, you do not have to, you do not owe them an excuse. You just say, no, I can't right now. And that's it. You do not owe anyone an excuse. A lot of times, you know, normally it's been recommended for us to have at least at least six months of um, reserves or six months of our expenses in our savings account for an unforeseen uh, accident. So we can make sure that if, for instance, if 
you know, we go out of work for six months that we have that money put to the side so we can pay our expenses. But if you look at this pandemic and a lot of people who have been put in a position where they are forced out of work for up to a year, I think it's pretty safe to say that maybe we should have a year of reserves in our savings account. And so to get to that space, to get to that, that space of wealth and, and, and financial peace, it's going to require you to say no to things that don't align with your goals. And Tracy says no is her favorite word. I love that. Shannon says facts. Hi, Shannon. <laughs> so yeah, you do not owe anyone an excuse. This is your financial future. You will come to realize that when you have uh, financial hiccups, that you will not have people in your corner. You will not, the people who you think will be in your corner to offer you assistance will not be there. So be there for yourself. You are your own best friend. You know, show people how to treat you. Let's go to the next slide. And so I love this quote, and it says, the secret to change is to focus on your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So again, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. And so wherever you are, whether you are in the 700 range or you're in the six or 500 or even lower, use your use where you're at to build and propel you to greater things because it's only up from there and when you get to a better place just remember to help someone else please can you all do that for me i, I uh, want to share this one thing also I, don't, I think this is probably the last slide but um my son's getting ready to come in here <laughs> and so when i first started uh building my credit when I first started building my credit, I actually went to dinner with a, yes, Debbie, start where you stand. I actually went out to dinner with a woman and she mentioned to me that she had an 825 credit score. And, and up until that time, I had never heard anyone else mention their credit score. It was almost like, you know, it's something that we don't talk about. We never talk about our finances with people. We never talk about our credit score. And she openly admitted that she had an 825 credit score. And instead of feeling jealous or anxiety that I wasn't there, I just simply asked her, how? How did you do it? And so, you know, I just want to leave you all with this message that if you're not where you want to be in whatever aspect of life that you are in, find somebody who is where you want to be. Hopefully those people are here at Bloom. If they are not currently, invite them here. But ask them how. How did they get there? And a lot of times they'll be willing to share. You'll be very surprised how kind and helpful people are. Um, and just let's continue to just grow together. So I think this is the last slide. I hope you all have enjoyed this. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment in the chat box. But let me know if that makes sense for everyone. And if you enjoyed the conversation today, I definitely enjoyed uh, being here with you all. It's always a pleasure. And if you have never um, you know, signed in with us here at Bloom before, uh, this is a, a very open and welcoming space. <laughs> I want to be like you, Miss Boss CEO, owning three salons at once. <laughs> yes. And so I feel strength just being around all of you. And I just really appreciate you all coming to uh, these discussions with us. I think it's very powerful. You are a queen too, Jackie. You are a queen. I think it's very powerful when we all come together and uh, form some type of alliance and pour into each other and just share information. So I'm grateful that we're able to have a platform here where we can share with each other and encourage each other. And if you are currently not following our page and part of the discussion, I want you to go ahead and like our page and follow it. If there is a topic that you would like us to drill further down into, please send us a message. I consider myself, uh, you know, there for you all. This platform is for you. If, they, if I have to find someone else to come in and talk about a discussion, if they are the expert, expert in this area, I will do so. So uh, right now we air every Monday at 7 p.m. Central and 8 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live. I love you too, Tammy. Thank you, my sisters. Look at all these queens. I love you all too. And so next week, I have a treat for you all. Next week, we're going to be talking with Morris, Morris excuse me, and Cheryl Haggins. They are an amazing couple. They're both entrepreneurs. 
very successful, and they have managed to have a strong, healthy union. They are parents, they are grandparents, um, and just all around great people. And so they're going to take the time next Monday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, to tell us how they're able to manage it all. Because if we have any people in here that are married or have relationships in a business and things, you all know that it can be very time consuming and very stressful at times. So they have the system down. You ever go out and you know go on a date and you see a couple that looks like they've been married for an extended period of time and somehow they're still like gazing in each other's eyes and still madly in love and just no stress? Well, they are that couple. Okay, and so instead of, you know, being jealous or hating our bloomers here, we are the type of women, we are the type of people that when we see someone in a space that we want to be, we talk to them, we connect with them because goodness and greatness rubs off on all of us. So I just want to leave you all with that message. Go ahead and like our page and join us next Monday. And I cannot wait to bloom with you all and have this discussion again. I love you all. Y'all have a great day. Be a blessing to someone else. Invite them to the next discussion. Bye.